What's going on everyone, it's the halfback here bringing you something a little bit different today as I take a look back at the tactics employed by Luis Enrique during his memorable first season in charge of Barcelona and how they can be replicated in Football Manager 2015. Now throughout the 2014-15 season there were a number of comparisons made between Pep Guardiola's Barcelona side and now Luis Enrique's Barcelona side. But for me, there is a lot, or a few at least, noticeable difference between the two sides. Uh, one of the most notable differences for me is in the way that the possession is kept. Now, under Guardiola, probably the best way I could explain this is that the possession style was a lot more extreme, whereas under Luis Enrique, the focus is still on keeping the ball and maintaining possession, but uh, it's not as extreme, it's more direct, it focuses on um, getting the ball to the goal in a lot less passes. Now by that I do not mean long range passes. Again as I said the focus is still on keeping the ball maintaining possession. But they will look to do that in a lot less passes. And of course Barcelona have the quality players in order to do that. So I'll start off by talking about the team mentality, team shape and team instructions. And then I'll move on to the individual player instructions and their role within the system. But of course, as you can see, I've got myself set up as the Barcelona manager. I've set up a familiar looking Barcelona team. I believe this was the lineup in the Champions League final. I'm pretty sure it was. So if I take you to the team instruction uh, mentality, sorry, straight away. Now under Guardiola, this would probably be set to control, I would say. But under Luis Enrique, if I look at uh, attacking and what it says here, it says it aims to exploit space in the final third by employing a fast tempo and direct attacking passing supported by a defensive mentality aimed at recycling possession. This for me ex um, best explains uh, Luis Enrique's style going forward. As I mentioned, the passing style is more direct in terms of, you know, the passing is a much quicker pace and it looks to get towards the goal much quicker. So moving on to the team shape, quite self-explanatory. I've set it to fluid. Of course, the you have the initial system, but within that system, the players are allowed to move around, find pockets of space and help to kind of open up gaps within the opposition defence and that's why I've got it set to uh, fluid. The team instructions, I've got shorter passing, pass into space. Now pass into space would probably not be selected during the Guardiola reign but um, under Luis Enrique I feel like um, players are more willing to find longer range passes. I mean it's not something that's done on a regular basis but uh, when the oppor opportunity does arise they they do feel like they are able to make those longer range passes. Um, just an example, one example I can give to you is when Barcelona played Real Madrid at the new Camp in the season just gone. Uh, Dani Alves has the ball, is in defence with the ball. Under Guardiola, he would probably look to pass it back to the defence or he would try and find the pass to one of the central midfielders. But on this occasion... He looked up, he saw Luis Suarez, of course, and I'll mention Luis Suarez when I talk about the instructions, a very vital part of the system. But he saw Luis Suarez uh, making a run off the shoulder of one of the centre-backs. Uh, he plays in the ball over the top of the defenders. It finds Luis Suarez and Luis Suarez, as you would expect, puts it into the back of the net and puts Barcelona in the lead in the game. So that's just uh, one example I can give of players in the Luis Enrique team ball being more willing to find longer range passes. Again, as I said, still the focus is still mainly on playing shorter passing and retaining possession, but they are more willing to play longer balls if the chance does um, the present the opportunity sorry does present itself. I've also got work into the box, uh, play out of defence. Again, I'll talk a lot about these instructions when I. Um, go through each individual because I think that they kind of explain why I've got these team instructions set up here. I've got play wider, I've got much higher defence. Now this probably links in with quite a few of these uh, instructions here. Um, this is something that's kind of similar between the Guardiola side and Luis Enrique side is that the defensive line will be pushed my, much higher up um, quite close to the midfield in order to support them when trying to win back the ball. You can see I've got closed down much more, um, get stuck in. Again, as I said, 
the Barcelona players will be relentless in trying to win back the ball. And something that Luis Enrique really improved on was the fitness levels of the players. I mean, the fitness levels of the Barcelona, this Barcelona side is just incredible. Uh, they will hunt you down for 90 minutes. They will not let you relax on the ball. They will continuously, continuously close you down when you're on the ball. And they're just the best side in the world at doing that. And uh, it just makes it so difficult for the opposition um, when there are such intense pressure constantly to be able to form any kind of attack. But I've got also got used tighter to mark in again. That links in with the closing down. They will stick close to their man um, and get stuck in on them. I've got present, uh, prevent, sorry, short goalkeeper distribution, higher tempo, as I mentioned, um, with the more direct passing style, they'll look to get to the box a lot quicker with their passing. And that's why I've got a higher tempo. And of course, being more expressive, players are allowed to express themselves within the system that this uh, that they are in. So that's kind of the team instructions there. And now I'll move on to talking about individual players. And I'll start from goalkeeper and work my way through each individual player and their role within the team. So if we take a look at the goalkeeper straight away, Again, the goalkeeper's role is very simple within the team. They will not look to play sh uh, long-range passes. They'll keep it simple. They'll play short passes to the, either the centre-backs or if they see the full-back uh, available on the touchline, they will play a pass out to the um, full-backs on the touchline there. But they will not look to play the ball uh, long-range passes towards the front men. Um, they are instructed to also retain possession and then moving on to the centre backs, we've got PK and Mascarano there. I've set them both just as normal uh, centre backs to defend. Um, you could possibly set them as um, ball playing defenders, um, particularly PK, who's someone who's given a lot of license to bring the ball out of defence. Um, he'll look to play passes, short passes, as you can see there. I've got both of them set to play it shorter they will come out of defense look to possibly play the ball to either one of the center midfielders or again the wing backs who will be hugging that touch line and most of the time they will be open and available for a pass and that's why i've got pass it shorter um set to the center backs and move it on to sergio busquets's role as the holding midfielder in the team now sergio busquets is someone who can often go unnoticed in a game but the role that he plays within this system is so important he is a vital cog in that barcelona side and you can see i've set him as a deep line playmaker to defend under guardiola that would probably be a halfback um set to a halfback sorry you would often see him drop into kind of these areas here when the opposition are on the attack. So he'll support the centre backs, of course, with the wing backs pushing right up the pitch. Um, it could often leave Barcelona exposed defensively, and Busquets would kind of sit in there and help out of that. Um, under Luis Enrique, I've noticed that he's he still kind of sits in this kind of role here, but he won't really drop as deep as he would have before. He'll just kind of sit in this role here. Um, something that is probably underrated in his game is his technical ability. He's fantastic technically. Um, his awareness, his positioning is first class. He will sit in there. Now, you can see I've got a short pass. So he'll play very simple passes. He won't um, lose the ball at all. He'll keep the ball, play it simple. He won't dribble out of the ball. He... Um, and defensively, he, he he's always there to mop up any danger coming towards the, the defence. As I said, his position and positioning and his awareness is just first class. He's always there. He's always in the right position to mop up any danger within that team. And he's just such an important t uh, player within that team. So that's the role that I've got him set up in there. Moving on to the wing backs, I'll just talk about one of them because I've got both wing backs um, with the same instructions. I've only put them... Uh, the only instructions I've set them is to stay wider. And if, as you saw on the team instructions, I've got the instructions to play wider. And I've got the full backs, into the wing backs, sorry, instructions to stay wider. These two wing backs are very, very important within the system. They essentially allow Barcelona to stretch the pitch. When, you, when Neymar and Messi, who I'll go on to talk about, come inside, they drift from their positions. Uh, it allows the wing backs to get forward and um, 
when Messi and Neymar drag players all over the place with them, it gives the space for the likes of Alba and Dani Alves to get forward, find pockets of space uh, down the wings. Um, and again, as I said, they will stretch the pitch and just make it very, very difficult. You know, uh, pushing the defenders all the way back into their own half. And when they go forward, it forces also the opposition wingers to go back. And it just makes it so difficult because when the opposition do eventually get the ball, which is, you know, when they're in Barcelona, they rarely get the ball. But when they do get the ball, it just makes it so difficult to um, break because the majority of the team is camped in their own half. And when they get the ball, there's just no options going forward. And the way Barcelona press and try to wing the ball back quickly, they just, um, they're just unable to because it's just too difficult to um, find a pass forward. Um, and yeah, as I said, that's the, I've set the the wing backs um, with the both uh, same team instructions there. Moving on to the central midfielders, Rakitic's role is something that I found really hard to kind of define within Football Manager. Um, he's he's obviously he's come in as kind of Xavi's replacement, but they're two different players. Xavi was someone who would sit a lot deeper. He would be a deep line playmaker within this team. He would sit a lot deeper, um, dictate play from a deep uh, position, you know, play kind of the, some of those long range passes or those, you know, little passes to find uh, small gaps. Uh, but Rakitic is a different player in my opinion. Um, he's a lot more of a threat going forward and he's given a lot more of a license to go forward. And that's why I've got get further forward instructed for him. And I've also got roam for, from position set up for him. You would often see Rakitic, um, you know, you'll, you'll find him in little pockets of space. If you think back to the Champions League final, Barcelona on the attack, um, ball played in by, I think it was Iniesta. And there's Rakitic in the box, um, in space. To not uh, put in the back of the net, Rakitic. Again, as I said, I couldn't really define his role. He's not a deep line playmaker. I do not feel like he's a box to box midfielder. I feel like he's a lot more than just someone who gets from box to box, uh, making late surge and runs. I feel like he does a lot more than that. He's got fantastic passing ability. So I just set him as a central midfielder. He's not a ball winning midfielder, and I don't feel like he's a roaming playmaker. So that's kind of the reasonings behind me, just setting him as a central midfielder. And again, as I said, I've got him to get third forward. So he'll find these kind of spaces or any pockets of space. Um, a very intelligent player, and that's kind of my role for him. Now, moving on to Iniesta. Um, I've got him as an adva uh, advanced playmaker. His role has kind of changed slightly in the last few years. If you think back to him under Guardiola, you would remember Iniesta, someone who makes those mazy dribbling runs, um, take on a few, take on three, you know, two, three players, and then find you know a beautiful pass to Messi or whoever, Henri or Eto, as it was uh, under Guardiola. In recent years, though, or certainly last season, on the season just gone, he doesn't kind of make those mazy dribbling runs as much. He's still a very important player in the team and he's been criticised kind of for his goals and assist tally. But his role in the side has changed and that's why he doesn't get as many... Well, he didn't score, he wasn't really someone who scored a lot of goals anyway. But certainly in terms of assists, his role has changed um, slightly since the Guardiola reign. I've got him to roam from position. Like Rakitic, he will look to advance up the pitch. He will look to find little pockets of space. Um... That he and then he uh, will look obviously to find Neymar, Suarez, or Messi in the, in space. But the kind of the dribbling um, license that he was given under Guardiola is not quite um, given to him now. He essentially allows gives the ball to the likes of Neymar and Messi and allows them to fill that role um, in terms of kind of opening up gaps in the defense. But I'll move on to the front three now. I'm going to start off with Neymar and I'll work my way to Messi. Um, I've got Messi, uh, Neymar sorry, set as an inside forward to roam from his position. You can, you'll can, often see Neymar uh, move into kind of central areas. The front three are essentially allowed to roam and you know move into spaces, where, wherever spaces they can find to pick up the ball. Neymar, you'll often see him drift into central areas. Um, 
that and that helps as well when you it allows the wing backs to get forward and stretch defenders when the defenders are dragged with Neymar or Messi and the full backs will get forward but Neymar again as I said will often find himself in central areas looking to pick up the ball to get out the back four find the pass or shoot if the uh, have a shot or goal sorry if the opportunity does arise uh, then I've, the only instruction that I've set up for him is to roam from position and then moving on to Luis Suarez Suarez, an uh, incredible, incredible player. Uh, such a perfect fit in this Barcelona team. Of course, under Guardiola, he tended to favour a kind of midfielder or you know Messi in that role and play them as a false nine. They'll look to drop off into these kind of areas here and allow the kind of these wide players to move up, be the furthest players up the pitch. Whereas under Luis Enrique. He wanted a traditional number nine, and he's got that in Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez will often be the furthest man up the pitch. He will occupy the defenders. He'll make very intelligent runs. That's one of the strongest parts of his game, I feel like. He's in, he's such an intelligent player, as well as being a great finisher, you know, someone who can hold up the ball. His in, um, The runs that he makes allows... Neymar and Messi to find the space uh, to get on the ball and you know essentially do what they do best in terms of going forward but I've just got Luis Suarez to move in the channels as I said he will look to make runs in behind the defence he'll look to drag defenders left and right and give space to Neymar and Messi his role in the team is very unselfish like of course you know under in Liverpool he was the main man of course coming to Barcelona he wasn't going to be the main man but his role in the team is very, very important. And of course, you can see what a fantastic season he's had at Barcelona. But moving on to the last man in the team, the most important player in this Barcelona team, the incredible Lionel Messi. Of course, a lot of people do find it hard to get Messi's role in the team right. or well, not right, but how they feel like he plays in real life. Um, and for me, I've set him as an inside forward to attack. Um, you could also set him probably as an advanced playmaker maybe but I decided to set him as an inside forward to attack and the reason for that is that as an inside uh, advanced playmaker I feel like he would be um, stationed kind of in this area whereas Messi in real life he will be on the you will see him a lot on the touchline as well as in these kind of areas he's essentially given a free role within the team to do what he's like so if you see I've got the instructions here um, shoot more often of course when Messi gets the ball he's always looking to work the opportunity to shoot the shoot uh, roam from position again as I said he's essentially given a free role within the team you would often find Messi in central areas he'll be in central if he's not getting the ball he will go anywhere he can to find the ball I've often seen Messi you know kind of in the deeper areas looking for the ball and as I said again once again he has essentially given a free role within the team to do what he likes I've got him to also find more risky passes. Now, as much of a, as a fan I am of Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the reasons that I feel like Messi is um, a much superior player to Ronaldo is his passing ability. And it's something that can maybe not go unnoticed, or it is noticed, but it's not something that's always talked about. And Messi's passing ability is just incredible. You know, he'll often find gaps where you just can't see any um his vision is just incredible um he will often play passes again as i said that you would not think that were on and that's why i've got him set to more risky passes but yeah so essentially that's why i've got messi set on these instructions and as an inside forward he will look to sometimes touch hug the touchline pick up the ball on the touchline and make those incredible dribbling runs and take on four, five defenders. If you think back to the Copa del Rey final against Bilbao, uh, that incredible run and goal that he scored. Or he will, f you know, if he's not getting the ball out wide, he will drift in to the kind of the central areas or, you know, a little bit deeper, pick up the ball, look for a pass. Or, of course, if the opportunity is there, he will take on a few players and put the ball in the back of the net. So this is kind of my take on Luis Enrique's um, philosophy and system on, uh, at Barcelona. Of course, you may not agree with this. Uh, you may think there's some other things that should have been added or some instructions that shouldn't be there. 
But again, as I said, this is kind of just my opinion on uh, Luis Enrique's system at Barcelona. If you did enjoy this kind of video and you want me to do um, kind of more tactical videos, I suppose, then please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you just uh, stumbled across this and you're not subscribed to the channel just yet, please do subscribe to the channel. It's been The Halfback and I'll see you guys very soon.